This is Dr. Gaines from Melville School District with what's become our little weekly data update on um, COVID. So we start with transmission rate and that's done at a regional level and our transmission rate has been pretty steady over the month of September ranging uh, around in that 1.01, 1.02 uh, there was a week where we didn't get a report, um, but indications are it kind of stayed in that area. So transmission has been stable right around one over the last um, month or so. In terms of positivity rate, since we've really been tracking it since the end of July, we've seen a significant decline. But here in recent days, it appears that it's kind of leveled out and it's hovered around five. When we look at it across the month of September, we see that it's fallen from around six and a half and now it's really honing in and, and kind of kind of a smooth curve back and forth a little bit plus or minus of five. And we can see that in the seven, 14 and 21 day trends that it's been relatively steady. When we look at that percent change in daily new cases, uh, that continues to be erratic. And when we look at it um, at the 7, 21, and 14 day, it does look like we're seeing uh, an increase there. When we look at the cases per 100,000, and we look at those on our three zip codes, and this is really the measure that comes from Harvard's Global Institute for Health, um, we see that we are having a downward trend as we look at the seven day. Over the 21 day, it's a slight downward, but over the last 14, it's a little bit of an up because we kind of have that one really low day. When we look over the course of the month though, what we see is we've spent the entire month of September below 25. So that's a move in a positive direction. And we've just kind of been hovering um, around that 20 mark. We seem to go up a little bit, kind of go down a little bit. We really, really need to get this uh, down below 10. When we look at those cases per 100,000 100, in the age bands, we can see that pretty much zero to 14 continues to look pretty good. And we've started to see a decline in the 15 to 19 year olds. Looks like it kind of started maybe mid month and has been going down. However, we need it to get below 25 and stay below 25 for a sustained period. And really, we'd like to get it below 10. When we look at the seven, 14 and 21 day, can see that drop in the high school age range um, but the 0 to 14 is staying pretty steady. When we look at positivity rate and now we're able to look at positivity rate just within the school district boundary within those age ranges and what we're seeing is really nice below 5% positivity rates in the 0 to 14 group and the 15 to 19 uh, still hovering above 10%. So that high school age, grade, age group still giving us some challenges. Now, earlier this week, we put a new piece up on our website and that is since we're back in school, at least in some measure, that we're reporting what's happening in the buildings. So this is up on our website and we're updating this every Monday, uh, kind of from what's been happening the seven days prior. So you can see the number of cases and you can see how many students or staff that have been required to quarantine uh, because of those contacts. So as we look at the coming weeks, we're not gonna make any changes this week to what our plan's been. So pre-K two's been in the blended model for a little bit now. And as we said last week, we're gonna transition three to five on Tuesday, October 6th. Six to eight will transition on Thursday, October 8th. 
At this time, high school is going to remain in that connected model. So as always, we ask that you please be sure to wear your mask, social distance from others, be sure to limit your physical contact and avoid social gatherings as well as washing your hands. So we've seen stability over the last month. So hopefully we can begin to see a significant decrease getting that transmission rate below one and keeping it below one. Thanks everybody for your time and I hope you have a great weekend.